Howdy, howdy. This week I experimented with specific gravities, which is the density of paint, so how many solutes are in the solution. We're going to do volcanic colors today. I'm going to start with a titanium white from Liquitex Basics, permanent black from Master's Touch Acrylics, brilliant yellow from Artist Loft, and brilliant red from Artist Loft as well. Lastly is metallic 14K gold from Delta Caram Coat. And those are our paints. So I'm going to show you guys how I mix them up. Let's go check that out. Okay, so here are my three kinds of paints. And this gold that I'm also going to throw in there for some added color. All the colors except the gold that's already mixed are going to have this coconut milk hair serum in them. So we can get some cells out of these guys. So the first color is our light red. Red has a specific gravity of 1.12. And I made sure to label it since they look basically the same from the top of the cup. I'm going to put that silicone in there and let's give it a stir so you guys can see the consistency of the light red. So you can kind of see it's super watery. It's more like the consistency you'd want for a Dutch pour and less likely you'd want for a flip cup, but that's what I'm going for here. I'm going to wipe off my palette knife and go ahead and grab our second lightest color, which is going to be this yellow. So the yellow has a specific gravity of 1.13, so it's just a little bit heavier than the red. And I made sure to label that once again. And I'm going to add in that serum so we can get cells and you guys can see once again the consistency is really watery more like a dutch pour less like a flip cup to get that consistency i just added a little bit more water than i did for the heavy paints that are the ones right here and we're going to start with the yellow so i don't have to wipe off my palette knife again specific gravity is the same i've labeled it so i know which one it is adding in the silicone and let's give it a stir so you guys can see how much thicker this paint is compared to the light yellow. And as you can see it's a lot thicker, more like a normal flip cup, mounds on mounds. This is the kind of consistency I would usually go for but you know we're trying out different things today. I'm gonna wipe off my palette knife and do the same thing to the heavy red. Once again, it's the same specific gravity, adding in a couple pumps of that coconut milk hair serum, giving it a good stir, and again, mounds on mounds, normal flip cup consistency for these heavier colors. Wiping off my knife, and we're going to move on to our white. White is a heavier color. It has a specific gravity of 1.28, so it's quite a bit heavier than the red or the yellow. And for that reason, I've decided to water it down a lot to kind of artificially make it lighter. So again, it's going to be more like a Dutch pour consistency, as you can see, and less like a flip cup mounds on mounds consistency. So that one is a little bit more like these lighter two. I'm expecting those colors to float to the top and also spread out and kind of meld with the other two colors. Lastly, we're going to do our black adding in a couple drops of silicone to that one and we'll give it a stir to show you guys it's a bit thicker it's more like a mounds on mounds less like a dutch pour not quite as thick as those other two heavy colors though if you're wondering where i got these specific gravity numbers for these paints someone put together a lovely list of the gravities for Liquitex Basics, which was the closest numbers that I could find for these paints. And you can find that in the description. Giving all my cups a little tap to get out the bubbles, and I think we are ready to go. We're going to have three flip cups, and each is going to have a black base. I'm going to layer my paints so that the heaviest paints are in the bottom of the cup. That way, when we flip them, they're going to be at the top of the cup. The idea here is that the heavier paints will sink down through the lighter paints, the lighter paints will come up through the heavier paints, and we'll get more cells that way. I'm also throwing in some of the lighter colors like the white, 
in between just so that they meld and kind of bring the colors together. I'm looking for almost a little more of a muddier look for this painting with some definition from those heavier colors. I had made a painting before this one where the colors got a little too muddied, so I actually ended up running out of paint, which is why I'm coming in here with my extra paint in these squirt bottles. Another thing that I learned from the first painting that I did with these colors is that this yellow will mix with the black and make green, so I was trying to be very careful that no yellow was touching black because it did not look good. <laughs> And I'm going to use my palette knife to get as much paint as I possibly can out of these colors that I've made. I'm not super worried about the layering of the colors as long as the yellow is not touching the black and the lighter colors are at the top and the heavier ones are at the bottom. I usually just use my canvas as a wipe for my palette knife since the paint is going to get covered up anyway and it'll kind of just help it flow in the end. So I'm just going to finish filling up this last cup and I think after that we will be ready to flip them over. Alright, I'm going to give everything a little tap to make sure any big air bubbles are out of the cups and then we're going to flip them over. I love this part because you start seeing like the colors melding together in that little overflow that happens when you flip them and it's just really exciting to see how the colors start interacting. I'm going to add some filler color which will just help things flow together because I kind of ran out of pink for this project and it'll also just add some extra color in. And I'm thinking about how the stuff in between the colors, so that golden red, is going to stay in the painting, but all of that red that I put on the side is probably going to get knocked off. And I'm just putting it on there because it'll help to get the colors to flow better. I'm doing the same thing with the yellow. I'd rather lose that yellow than lose the awesome patterns that are going to come out of these slip cups. This also gives the cups a chance to sink down, which will help the patterns develop. So flipping the cups over can be even scarier than when you put them down on the canvas. It makes a big difference which direction you flip them and how you flip them, how fast. So I'm going to go for it, let's hope. And it's looking pretty cool so far. The cells are already popping up and I'm just gonna get as much paint out of the cup as I can. Since that paint will go off the edge, I'm not too worried about what it looks like. And then I just use the cup to kind of push it along the edge to help it get going. Next one, and ooh, another cool one. Same thing, I'm just gonna not worry about this edge because it's going off and I'm going to help it on a little bit. Inside of the cup looks absolutely awesome. One more flip, taking it over to this space here, and this is probably my least favorite flip of all of them. I can already tell that I want to push that part off. So I'm going to give the whole thing a minute just to sit, let the colors melt together a little bit, and fill in any gaps naturally. You can see they're closing in. And then I'm going to go in with my palette knife and get the edges down and fill in any little spots of canvas that are still open on the board. I'm not concerned about which kind of paint I'm using on the edges since all of this is going to eventually go off the canvas or be covered up with other paint. It doesn't matter if I use black on yellow or if it's a super muddy, ugly color. All this is doing is helping the paint flow off the canvas when I tilt it. And now that I have all of the canvas filled up, there's no more white spaces left, I can start tilting. So let's get going on that.
I started by tilting the side that I liked the best so that I wouldn't be stretching it out too much and I would be able to keep as much of that upper part that I liked and then started pouring it down so I could get rid of that lower or upper half that um, I didn't like so much. I'm trying to go as slowly as possible so that I'm not overstretching the cells that I do like. I really want to make sure that I keep those parts and get rid of the ones that I don't. That big splotch of yellow on the bottom is really bothering me so I want to get that off but I love that darker black part above it. So that is the struggle right now that I'm trying to compete with. You can see that I'm trying to hold the side, keep the black on. I'm trying to convince that yellow to get off the canvas by pushing more paint off of it. And I kind of had some success with it. Still, there is a lot of yellow in it in the end. I ended up kind of going for a Dutch pour technique and blowing the yellow off of the canvas and blowing the red into it. This actually worked out super well so I started using it on other parts of the canvas and I got some really cool results. I was super happy with how this like Dutch pour technique was making this painting look. I think that it actually works really well to use this Dutch pour technique with a flip cup. I was getting a ton more smaller cells popping up and I would definitely do this again. And I think we're all done. I really like how it turned out. I'm just gonna give it a little torch to get any bubbles or little cells up. And I think that'll do it for this painting. I am loving this center part in this part over here. Let's go down a little bit closer so you guys can see it. I'm really happy that I added the gold to this piece. I don't think it would be the same without it. I also am super excited about all the cells that popped up. I feel like the color density thing kind of worked out. Um, those heavier colors are definitely making way for the lighter colors and causing some awesome results. And here is our finished dried peat. You might notice that it's a little bit different than the one you just saw. And that's because I accidentally dropped my phone in it when I was taking pictures of it. Whoops, it happens. But I just poured that part off and it looks fine. And that'll be it for this video this week, guys. I hope you liked it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see and I'll see you next week. Later!